far as spring seeding is concerned, there's really nothing wrong with taking advantage of the flush of growth that's going to happen on your lawn anyway and getting some extra seed out there to flush things up. Now, this is mainly going to apply to cool season grasses and it's actually a pretty simple process to follow, but you're going to need a few things. One of the biggest devastating things that happened across the Midwest and all kind of through the South last year was armyworm infestations and they caused an awful lot of damage. So you may be coming into this year facing patches of grass that are dead or, or heavily damaged that you need to fix. So this is going to be the time to take advantage again of this spring growth uh, using whatever sort of coverage might already be there and not necessarily having to do an entire renovation. So let's quickly go through some of the equipment that you're gonna need in order to make this happen. Number so number one, you're going to need a mower. Hopefully everybody has one of those. If you're already taking care of grass, any mower will do, doesn't really make a difference. The second thing you're going to need is like a thatch rake or a leaf rake or some sort of a dethatching tool would be helpful to just remove some extra debris. If you don't know about those, you can click right up here, that'll help. The next thing that you're going to need is obviously the seed, the seed to match the cultivar that you already have. Uh, that's going to be very important. And you could do this with say, a pre-mixed bag like Turf Mend, which I do on my golf green. Or if you're just buying seed, you're also going to need the fourth thing, which is going to be something to cover it in, whether that be peat moss or a little bit of topsoil, or just something to give a little bit of extra coverage, especially if we're dealing with low bare spots. That's going to be very important. Now the last thing on this list is going to be maybe of lesser importance. It sort of depends on who you are, but for a lot of people it is very important. And that would be to cover off sort of the biggest concern is when you're spring seeding, you definitely don't wanna be putting out a ton of pre-emergence beforehand because that is going to impact your overall stand if you're trying to bring seed up. So using something like Mesotrione is gonna be a great opportunity right here. That would be Syngenta's Tenacity. If you're unfamiliar with that, it's, there's a lot of information on that. I use that on this renovation here. In this situation, it really shines. It works well as a pre-emergent and it can kind of clean up some post-emergent stuff and give you a little bit of a buffer zone between your germination time and when you might have the ability to put down a pre-emergent. Aside from that, you're gonna need water and probably it's a good time to go ahead and start fertilizing. So let's talk a little bit about germination times real fast. For the most part, if we're talking about cool season grass, you're gonna be looking anywhere between seven and 21 days and that'll be on your fescue, that'll be on your rye, that'll be on your bluegrass, bluegrass taking the longest. So you wanna make sure that the timing of getting your seed out is right in line with mother nature. So I'll put a link down below to the Greencast site that shows soil temperatures. You can test your own soil temperature with a probe and see what's going on, but if we can be in that 50 degree plus soil temperature, that is going to make a big difference. And that's really right near the surface. Yes, could there be a potential for frost in some areas? For sure, but you should have enough coverage if we're just doing an overseeding and not a complete renovation from bare dirt that you're going to have some insulation and that seed is going to come up. Okay, so after all of that, let's just quickly go through the steps. And this is actually very, very simple. So the first one is this, mow that lawn short. It's springtime, things may not even be out of dormancy yet, but get out there and cut it down. Cut it down to an inch or an inch and a half, what you can get to get that thing smooth and low. So that's gonna be very important because we want the seed to get down and have as much chance to get down in the ground as possible without any waste. Now, a seed will germinate when conditions are correct. That means it's got proper moisture, it's got proper temperature, and that's really going to tell it to go. So we just wanna get it down there. We wanna have some sort of coverage. And again, if you have a bare spot, this is when you're gonna just have to cover some things up and just make sure it's got, it's, it's covered and taken care of. If you have a lawn that you're seeding into that has plenty of coverage with the existing turf grass, that is going to be enough coverage for that seed to come up. So after you've got the mowing done, you need to clean up whatever debris that is out there. And that's when one of these Sun Joes really comes in handy. They work great, or perhaps a new Ryobi one that's out there, uh, you know, or rent one. It doesn't really matter. These things are pretty cheap. And honestly, they look like they're throwaway most of the time. But if this is something that you're gonna do year over year, it might be a handy tool to have. Scratch everything up, clear the debris, maybe run your mower over it, bag everything, get it off so that you just have a good clear space to be working with. So the next thing obviously is gonna be spread that seed. So you're gonna need like a drop spreader or you know some sort of whirly gig if it's a little tiny place or you know just a standard rotary spreader, any of those are gonna to work to put your seed out. If you're using a premix like I've done here with the turf mend on my bent grass, 
I put that in a drop spreader, worked great, just trucked right along the green, and that was a really good way to go. There are links below for that product as well. Once the seed's all out there, take a look around a little bit, cover that in with your peat moss or whatever coverage you want to use. Just make sure that the seed gets covered up so that it has a good chance. And this could be an opportunity where if you haven't done it already, you can sort of level out some of those bumpy or rough spots as well. Might as well kill two birds with one stone. There's information a little bit about that right here. So after all this is done, you've, you've pretty much covered everything off. You got to get some water to it and it would be a good idea to fertilize. You can use a starter fertilizer. You could use a triple fertilizer that's just a basic 111. You can use the liquids like we have that are starters. The Green Pop works fantastic for this or any other stimulants that you want to run to help the seed germinate and come up strong. So after the fertilizer spread, now we have moved on to just getting out that meso application to just make sure that you can clean up anything to give you a little bit of a buffer zone. Make sure you read the label, make sure you follow the cautionary statements, make sure you put it out the right way and make sure you have the right equipment to do it. A backpack sprayer, whether battery or manual or even a hand can is going to be fine. Just follow the directions and put the material out. So once that's all done, it's time to water. And the most important thing here is to just keep the seed moist without super saturating everything. You don't want to go too heavy. Now, a lot of the time we can take advantage of these spring rains and, and whatever may be happening just environmentally and only have to do a little bit of irrigating, but you need to just kind of keep that on mind that you might have to put some water out there just supplementally to get everything kind of moving and in the right direction. So what else do you really need to do? At this point, it's time to just sit back and let the grass grow. And really by the time that 14 or 21 day cycle is hitting in, the grass has germinated, it's all growing through the low spots of the lawn and you're gonna be mowing on it within about three weeks. So just sort of let it go, let it start to grow up. This is why we cut it short to begin with. And then you can come out and start incrementally taking that grass right back down to the height that you like it and have all of your new grass seedlings filling in and just making your lawn even that more thick and beautiful and green and weed free. And that's really it. It's simple, it's easy, it's worth it. That's it. I'll talk to you guys real soon. See ya.